This week's video is sponsored by Case. Capture with confidence. Well, good morning, good morning, and welcome back to the channel and welcome back to Northumberland. So if you saw last week's video, which I'll leave a link to right above me here, you'll see that I was exploring the Northumberland coast and I thought I'd come back this week to check out this other area and actually I was going to actually visit uh, St Mary's Lighthouse and it's just behind me over this in, in this direction and it's absolutely covered in scaffolding thanks to everybody who told me that on Facebook as well. So I've had to re rearrange my plans somewhat so uh, I've come to a place called Charlie's Garden I'm going to have a little bit of an explore around the area see what I can find obviously what I wanted to do today is come to an area when everybody else comes to an area. During the day, it's summer holidays, the kids are off, so we haven't all got the time anymore to get out at certain times in the morning or that one hour in the morning or the one hour at night. So I thought, well, what can we do during the day to make good photographs? So I've come out to this area to kind of explore that concept and see what we can kind of find to photograph today. So let's get cracking, see what we can find, get set up, and I'll start walking you through it. So what is it we've got here? Well, looking around, what we have is, we've got wind turbines off in the distance back in that way. And what I'm looking at there is maybe isolating one of them and uh, maybe a square crop, something like that. And just a really simple shot. Um, there's also a row of four of them. So I might be able to do something with uh, like a panorama shot. Um, out behind you guys in that way where um, St Mary's Lighthouse is just sticking above the top there or at least the uh, scaffolding is I can see a boat on the horizon you've got these lovely sort of rock formations there and right in front of me here we've got another rock formation as well which could potentially work but obviously what we've got at the minute we've got the tide is um, currently going out it's receding so it's possibly going to be one of those shots that we have to wait around for and maybe wait until we get more water on it later and surrounding this rock formation here but uh, there's there's lots of little potential shots and it's just a matter of looking around there's always a shot to be had the one problem we have got today though as you can possibly tell it's really harsh light and obviously it's now getting on for half past nine ten o'clock in the morning so that light has got a lot more harsh so that's something we may have to deal with so we this the kind of things that we kind of look at for um dealing with harsh light is ways of using that to our advantage so what you should actually see is i've got that boat lined up now i've got a pano format because i think it works best and what I'm not trying to do is you can see that beautiful sort of bright shimmer on the water. I'm not trying to eliminate that at all because I think it's a really nice part of the frame. So I'm leaving that as it is. No filters with this one at all, just leaving it as it is because I want to keep that the best I can make it. So what I'm actually doing is if you look on the back of my monitor, I'm about just under a stop under exposed just to make sure everything's not clipping so that bright part is not going to blow out at all um, with the pano format i've got the boat lined up on that lower intersection there right on the on the right hand side of the frame and i've left that spit of land that you can see underneath with a little bit of water just below that just to kind of give it a bit more depth and a bit more detail but i really like the way this this pano format looks so there's nothing complicated about this shot at all. I've got my focus point set on that boat there, as you can see. There's that little um, jaggedy bit of rock, which is off to the right of that boat, and that's kind of framing the boat really nicely. But I also like that lovely open space on the left there with that lovely shimmering sea. So I'm going to keep that in there. Above, obviously, we've got a little bit of cloud on the horizon, although we've got these blue skies as well. So I'm just going to grab this shot now and it's uh, we're at 3 20th of a second uh, ISO 100 F16 and minus 1.3 underexposed. So I'll just grab that shot now. In fact, I've got it set to shutter because I was taking some long exposures before. So I'm just going to take that one again. And I'll use the remote shutter and grab that again.
So what I've done here is focused on the windmill itself. Obviously it's moving. Now I don't want to capture any movement with this shot. So what I want to do is just freeze the motion. So I've got the 100 to 200 lens on again. Um, I've got a remote shutter going. I've got the focus point. You can just see if I press record on the back of here now, you'll see the focus point is actually on the windmill itself. And then you've got all that negative space around it. And I've lined the lower third of that section up along the horizon line where the, where the um, basically the sea meets, meets the sky there. I've lined that lower third up along that line just so it kind of makes more sense visually. So that leaves basically the sea in the lower third it's got the windmill in the middle third and then sky in the top third there. And it just balances out really nicely. Now again, I'm about one stop underexposed to make sure that I'm not blowing any of the highlights out. And I'm just gonna grab this shot now. I've got it all centered, it's all leveled along that horizon line. And then I'm just gonna wait for the windmill itself because I want, want to make sure the points of the windmill are upright so that it's nice and uniform. So I'll just wait for that to happen and then grab the shot. And I'll take a few to make sure I get it in the right location. I've just missed that one there. And just to make sure I've got it all in the right place. And then what I'll probably do is as well, is I'll probably add a 10 stop filter and take a shot for smoothing the sea right out as well, just so I've got it. I might prefer it without that, but at least I've got it. So I always take those shots just in case, because when I get back behind the computer at home, I might want to smooth that out and simplify it even more. So I think now we've got those images, I'm gonna get back in the car and drive a little bit further along the coast and see what else we can find. Not far, probably, not even probably a mile just round the corner there, just see what we can see. So as you can see, it's gone completely blue sky today. We've got St. Mary's Lighthouse over this direction, which you can see is absolutely covered in scaffolding, which I was warned about, but I decided to come to this area anyway, just to explore what was here. And there's, there's loads of potential. So days like this, I suppose you can use for two things. You can come out, photograph no matter what and just put up with the weather conditions that you're given. Or you can use it as a location scout, places to come back with, look for compositions that will work so that you can come back and refine them when the, uh, when the conditions are more favorable. But I think today what I'm gonna concentrate on further around this side of the coast is more simple compositions. So what I mean is don't take in the grand landscape, don't look for the big scenics, look for the smaller details, maybe some long exposure work with some of the rocks with the leading lines, stuff like that to work on. Um, but it's just so beautiful, it's such a shame to waste a day like this. And just because you're getting this weather doesn't mean to say that you're not gonna get a shot. It's just a case of being more, um, more inventive, with, with the kind of shots you're gonna get. So I had a little bit of lunch and I'm refreshed now, so I came back out to find some more intimate details and that's what I'm gonna use today because it's so harsh and so bright. Obviously until that light kind of gets warmer later on, I've, I've kind of had it. So using the best of what I've got, is to focus on uh, more intimate details because you can, you can use that harsh light to your advantage. And what I mean by that is if you're focusing in on a, a little pool like I'm doing now, obviously we've got little bits of cloud cover. As those move over, it's giving um, 
like a dappled light almost. So you can kind of almost control that light or wait for that light to be controlled by uh, the clouds diffusing the light on the subject that you're photographing. And I find that really helpful. So it's just a case of waiting around till you get the light or the right amount of light that you want on that subject. Looking through, I've settled for a 4x3 because I want to make this as big as possible and fill the frame as much as possible. And what you'll see is as well, is I've got the top, there's like a line that goes into the green um, seaweed. And I've tried to line that up into that top right corner because I think it just makes sense to be there. I've kind of moved round and looked at different positions to see what works best with this composition. And this is the best one I can kind of make of this. I wanted to kind of get this whole pothole, if you like, in the middle of the frame or kind of centered in the middle of the frame. And then using the water itself, I've actually placed the case polarizer on and I'm just playing with different effects at the minute. So if I remove all that effect, you can see it gets rid of a lot of that glare off the top of the surface of the water and you can see right down into the pothole. But if I put it back on, it gives kind of a bit of a reflection of the sky. And I'm not quite sure which I actually prefer. I'm not sure whether that adds a little bit more depth than actually just seeing beyond and into the water. Adds a little bit more interest to the whole scene as well. So I'm going to grab that image. I'm currently at a 13th of a second F16 ISO 100 and I'm two stops under. I'm just going to raise that slightly. And the reason I'm doing that is for that reflection on the water. And every now and then the sun does come out of those clouds and it just lifts the whole scene again. So I'm just having to adjust as I go. I'm just gonna grab that shot now. So that's a shot with the reflections on the water. And if I just spin my polarizer to get rid of a lot of those reflections, see they're still there, but it has taken a lot of them off at the same time. So I don't know whether it's taken them off enough not to be a complete distraction, but then, I don't know, there's something about leaving that reflection intact as well, which is quite nice. So I think I'm just gonna take both and just keep taking both. And then I can always look back at it behind the, uh, behind the computer at home. But what I also think uh, I want to do here as well is maybe put a six stop on just to smooth this water out because the wind is blowing and when it blows it's rippling the top of the water but again it's one of those things to experiment with because I don't know whether I quite like that effect so what I'm really getting at is is always make sure you get all of this information because it's really easy to take that one image and then get back behind the computer and then think I wish I'd done this or I wish I'd done that so always take multiple versions of the images that you're taking just to make sure you're going to be completely happy when you get it back behind the computer Now it's amazing what you start to see once you start to look for these smaller details. And if you look along here, the rock textures and, and formations are just absolutely beautiful here. So what I'm thinking is if I can get down low enough, probably down here somewhere in this sort of area, I'll probably be able to get something with that and probably a, a pano sort of format, I think will work really, really well because I think what I want to do is cut out the sea above uh, and just focus on the, the rock itself and this section of water down here, if you can, hopefully, if you can see that just down here, this section of water. And I think what I'll probably do is use a uh, filter to, 
smooth that out and just simplify the whole image because really what I want to do is draw the viewer's attention to the rock formation and the textures in that itself so I think I'll give this a go as well but uh, I could be here for hours at this rate because I keep seeing little little um, vignettes that are going to just work really really nicely so uh, yeah I'm going to get set up and uh, see what I can make of this. So what you should see is this lovely sort of strip panel that I, I use so often in my photography and you can see with this shot here it works so well and what I've tried to do is, is if I just have a quick look through here and make sure I've got it lined up right yeah, so what I've tried to do is, you'll see the, the rock patterns in the top section of that frame and then the water in the lower section. And I've tried to go half and half. So half water in the frame and half rock, just to give it that sort of balance. Now, what I'm doing is trying to focus my focus points in the middle of that frame, although what I'm trying to do is actually focus between the rock, at the edge of the rock and the start of the water there. So just adjust that slightly, there we go. So easy enough, I'm just gonna select that focus point so you can see where I am, there you go. So it's an easy enough shot, there's nothing complicated about it. All you have to watch is because the sun is literally right above you and directly behind me, when it comes out in full force, i.e. from behind a cloud, which is just about to do now, it goes really, really bright. So you have to keep altering those settings to kind of keep it right. Now what I've done is I've taken a 10 stop filter, popped it on. And as you can see, that gets me down to around about, let me have a look now, a 50 second exposure. Now it probably doesn't have to be as long as that, but because it's so harsh, that's what I'm, I'm working with. Cause I want to try and keep my ISO around about 100, F16, so I get every detail nice and sharp, and then focus in that, uh, in that section there. Now it doesn't always catch, so I'll just move it across just slightly. There we go. So I'm just gonna grab this shot now. And really, really simple, but as I say, I'm tending to underexpose it if I can just slightly, just to prevent any of those barnacles or anything like that, because they're quite white just to stop any of those getting uh, specular highlights and blowing out the, the detail in them because that's what I'm really focusing in on here is those textures in the rock and those barnacles clinging to the rocks. Now I'm going to try this uh, strip pano and I'm also going to try the, the uh, a square crop just to zoom a little bit closer in on the detail but I think just by smoothing that water out and getting rid of that lower distraction it really draws your eye to the actual details and that's what I really really want with this shot. So finally on my way back to the car, this is another reason for coming out on days like this, regardless of whether you think um, you're not going to get shots or, or, or it's kind of hard working conditions, it's always worth coming out to them. Not only can you find these little vignettes, sh shots that you wouldn't normally think of taking, you also find different locations to come back and shoot later. And I've just found one here. and. I've been talking about the fact that St Mary's Lighthouse is all covered in scaffolding, but when it's finished, it's having a new paint job. So it's gonna be really bright, vivid, and stand out really well. So we've all seen the, the normal shots of St Mary's Lighthouse from right up, um, looking down the ramp towards it. And I think this one here that I found here has got something a little bit different. I'm actually using a different building as the uh, as the foreground element and then St Mary's is going to be in the background. 
Now there's a couple of little issues I'm gonna have with it when I come back to take it. Number one, you've got a few power lines running across which I'll have to get rid of. And the other thing is, there's a little watchtower down further beyond there that I'm gonna to have to just cut the edge off because it's just it's it's just not in the right place. And no matter which way I go, I can't line the uh, the lighthouse up and that at the same time. So I think there's gonna to be too much going on. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pop this image up now. It's obviously it's not a finished shot because it's just a bunch of scaffolding back there, but you're gonna get gonna get the idea of what I'm thinking about to come back to when that is completed and the conditions are better. Well guys, hopefully you've enjoyed this week's video exploring more of the Northumberland coast. If you have, like and subscribe and I'll see you on next week's video. Take care guys, bye bye.